everyone welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel today i wanted to make a video talking about ms and understanding ms for everyone who doesn't know which is probably most people my name is charlie i was diagnosed with ms multiple sclerosis back in 2022 i can't remember the month august August, September or October. It kind of changes every time I get asked because I can't really remember. I feel like that's kind of a, a dark place in my memory. So I'm not very good at remembering what happened around that time. But I think it was either August, September or October that I got diagnosed. And when I first got diagnosed, I was so... Just quickly, actually, before I dive into this, I'm talking into my phone because my camera microphone is broken so I'm being innovative and using my phone to sync up the audio to the video. Anyway, back to it. When I first got diagnosed I was very, I wanted to know like all of the information, I wanted to understand everything and I was very sensitive as you can imagine to negativity and I feel like all of the YouTube videos I would watch or the explanations that I would get were just very very negative and would just always talk about the negative side effects or how bad it could be and I was like I just want like a scientific definition because there was just so much like negativity around like surrounding it and especially when you first get diagnosed that is like the last thing you need because all you get told from doctors is like negative things and if anyone's like me I just wanted to know all of the science and just to properly understand what actually was going on in my body so that I could then relay that information to other people and also just understand what was happening to me so hopefully this video will be sort of like that just to explain what MS actually is the causes and the treatments that are currently available so to explain lots of the hard things in life I usually refer to reddit quite a lot I'm not very good at explaining things or just being very articulate and I really do rely on reddit and google a lot in my life so I went on to google gemini and asked them to explain like I'm five what is ms and they actually came up with some really good definitions so the first one says ms is like when the wires in your house have a plastic cover to protect them and that cover gets little holes or breaks in our bodies we have special wires called nerves that send messages from our brain to different parts of our body ms is when the protective cover around those nerves called myelin gets damaged this makes it harder for the messages to travel smoothly and that can make people feel tired weak or have trouble moving and then it went on to say the damaged areas of the nerves are called lesions. Think of lesions like little dents or scratches on the wires in your body. When the cover on the nerve gets damaged, the body tries to fix it but leaves behind these marks or lesions. These lesions can then be seen in a scan called an MRI. Such a hard disease to explain because it's one of those... I can't remember what the term is, like a butterfly disease or something, where every single case is so different. And so someone living next door to you could also have MS, but be in a completely different situation to you. They could have no progression. They could have lots of progression. It's so hard because everyone is so, so different. Um, so having that kind of like blanket statement, like a scientific definition to cover it is really useful. Because I also feel like when I was researching and trying to find out what it actually was, everyone would kind of explain to me the effects of it could be rather than telling me what it actually is. It could be like, oh, well, it could affect your walking or it could affect this or it could affect this. And I'm like, I don't, like, I'll deal with that when I have to deal with that. I just want to know scientifically what it actually is because just because someone else has had a similar story or someone else has been diagnosed does not mean at all that your story is going to be similar to theirs. Maybe in some circumstances it is, but um, in a lot of the time I've kind of learned that whenever someone tells me a story about MS, especially if it's a bad one, which is weird anyway, if someone is like relaying bad information about like a person they know who has MS, if someone is telling me negative or positive, I have learned to distance myself from that because I know that their truth is not my truth. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's just different for every single person so distancing yourself from the general like chit chat around that I think is really a really like positive thing you, you can do because you are completely on your own journey and yeah I feel like you I just got to kind of deal with what you're going through rather than focusing on other people or comparing your lives to other people's lives just don't know what you've got in store and so there's no point hyping yourself up hyping as so not the right word there's no point <laughs> I don't know what another word would be that's not hyping there's no point stressing over what your life could become because you genuinely have no idea what the future holds because it's so different 
for every single person. So on the same note, <laughs> I want to explain some of the common symptoms of MS as well, which is completely counteracting what I just said in my last point of like, don't compare yourself to anyone else. Fatigue, that's a really common one. I think fatigue comes from when you have lesions and because your body is working so hard to go on that pathway, even though it's got those holes and cracks in it, it's working so hard to be direct that you just get really really tired and exhausted which makes so much sense because your body is literally just like working harder to keep you alive so it needs a little bit more of a break than another person's body who doesn't have a mess oh, fatigue weakness numbness or tingling vision problems balance issues and pain a one that i suffer from pretty often is vision problems i think because i was when i got diagnosed i had optic neuritis which is I think one of the really common first initial symptoms that people get and it's where your immune system attacks your optic nerves and so it was just this pain that I got in my right eye where looking back forth up down really really hurt and so I kind of lost my vision in my right eye and I never got it back fully but I got it back pretty much fine i have stressed my body out a bit too much or i haven't got enough sleep or i'm not eating right i'm not fueling the way that I should be then I do get some vision problems in my right eye and it's it's not like a good thing but it's almost a positive thing because it lets me know it's like a physical symptom that lets me know like I need to calm down I need to slow down and just take a bit of time um, because I think sometimes because I am extremely lucky and I am able to live my life pretty normally most of the time I do sometimes forget what I've actually got and that MS is a pretty serious thing and so sometimes it's almost nice to have these sort of physical symptoms to be like, okay, I actually do have MS, I need to slow down, I need to calm down. Now, the one thing I really struggled with when I was first diagnosed was the cause. And it's something that I have had to learn to just be okay with, that I don't know what caused it. Because in my head, I was like that everything has a cause and it does not make sense for me to have this crazy life altering, like completely devastating disease when I'm a really really healthy person I'm super young it just didn't make any sense and it was so confusing and it was probably the the main thing that stressed me out and that's the annoying thing with MS is that they don't really know the cause and even when they diagnose MS it's not like you are positive for MS you're just positive for a range of things that indicate that you have MS some of those things are just physical symptoms. So for example, like me, if you've got that big symptom of optic neuritis, um, that'll kind of indicate to a doctor that something might be going on. And then if you've got lesions, like white matter on an MRI scan, and then one of the main things that they do, which is like the worst thing, is a lumbar puncture. And that's when you have to lie in like a fetal position and then they numb the base of your spine and then they trigger warning right now but they then stick a needle in the base of your spine and then they like take out some fluid and then for the next like week I would say I just had awful headaches and the only way you can cure it is if you lie down completely flat and so I would literally lie down all day long and then I would go if I was going to the bathroom I literally would like get on my hands and knees because you need to have the pressure on the bottom of your spine to make the headaches stop and then I had just like some argument with my doctor because he was telling me that I needed to drink caffeine. And I was like, the last time I drank, drank caffeine, I literally went crazy and I was shaking. And I couldn't concentrate. I don't want to do that. And I was just so like being so weird about it. And he was, and I went back to the doctors so many times. I, like, I would almost throw up because the headache was so bad if I sat up right. It was awful. I was in, in and out of A&E when it happened. And he was like, have you been drinking caffeine? And I was like, no, like I'm not doing it. I'm not drinking caffeine. And then... I gave in and started drinking caffeine and it completely helped it. <laughs> so I should have listened to the doctor in the first place. But anyway, that's just another one of the tests that they can do to make the diagnosis a bit clearer. I'm not sure if I actually could have said no to getting that done because it was honestly so bad. I would have been happy with like having the MRI and the blood test and leaving it there and being like, yeah, I believe you. The lumbar puncture was honestly, it was an experience. It was so bad. It was the first time I ever swore in front of my mum. We were in this like hospital room the most tend to a story time of my lumbar puncture in a hospital room with like curtains surrounding us and the nurse who was I think like a student nurse maybe she was like do you want me to hold your hand and I was like no 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 like I'm gonna be fine I have a really high pain tolerance and so I'm and a lot of pride and so I was like I'm absolutely fine don't even worry about me and I was like talking to the doctors the whole time 
I was like sat on the end of the bed and then he did it and I was like oh it's just such a weird sensation and it's the first time I've ever sworn in front of my mum and he was like you need to swear just swear he's like you can swear as much as you want just do not move a muscle <laughs> even though they don't know the exact cause for MS some of the things that they have linked it to to make your likelihood of having it a lot higher are genetics which makes sense another one is a vitamin d deficiency epstein-barr is another one which is a really really common virus is it a virus that most people get infected with at some point in their lives i think it was like 99 percent of people with ms have epstein-barr but not everyone with epstein-barr gets ms because i think most of the population have epstein-barr and then finally the good part is the treatments for ms there's no cure for it there are dmts which are disease modifying therapies or disease modifying treatments that help you just live with it and just coexist with it. And the DMT that I'm on is called Casimta, which is a really, really great one. And it's working really well for me, thankfully. And yeah, it's like a monthly subcut injection. But there are a bunch of other ones. There are quite a few for RRMS, which is relapsing remitting. I don't think there are as many for primary progressive MS, which is the other type of MS. But there are still some treatments for that one, just not as many as the RRMS one. So for example, what the treatments do, if we use Casimta as an example, is that's the one that I'm on, it targets B cells and B cells are part of your immune system that attack the myelin sheath and Casimta attacks the B cells. So it reduces the amount of them so that your chance of relapsing isn't as high because you don't have as many B cells attacking your brain and your spinal cord. I can just say as well, that if anyone is at the beginning of their diagnosis or knows someone who is at the beginning of a diagnosis, that things do get better and it's not, whoa, it's not a death sentence or the end of the world, even though I know it really, really feels like it is and it feels like nothing's ever going to be okay again. I can promise you that it is going to be okay again. And once you are on a treatment that works for you, once you're following a diet that works for you, you can live life again and it gives you such amazing perspective on everything and so you just learn to live with it and yeah it, it definitely gets better but yeah that's all from me today I will see you guys next time thank you so much for watching